The Drunkest Owners from Bar Rescue. What's up everybody, welcome back to another episode of Mike'em GTV, and today we're gonna be reacting to some more Bar Rescue, cause y'all love it and I love doing it. Before we get into it though, there is something I wanna say. We make a lot of fun drinking content here. Moderation is another big thing that I like to represent. I talk about drinking and having fun a lot, but I also talk about my own struggles with overindulging and knowing when it's time to cut back and take care of yourself. And a lot of times on these TV shows, Production doesn't care about that. They actually use your vices against you for better ratings. I don't want to contribute to that narrative. In these videos, we're gonna be reacting to a lot of people that probably, in my opinion, have alcoholism, which could be triggering for a lot of people watching these videos. And we'll make comments and we'll joke, but please at the end of the day, know that this is really nothing that's super funny. To me, when I watch this stuff, it's actually concerning. If I were to go into a bar and see an owner that has a business that's struggling and they're drinking too much because of it, I would be nervous. I wouldn't want them to worry about the bar. I would want them to worry about themselves and get help. I just wanted to clear that up for me personally to make sure that everyone at home knows this because it hits it hits home for me. That being said, let's roast some bitches. I don't know if y'all noticed, but I read your comments and everybody talking about my mic situation. Motherfucker, I got a mic. I got a boom mic. It's up here now. Hey, yo, motherfucker, what's going on? Thank you to everybody over on Patreon. It's because of you that I was able to get stuff like this to improve the quality of these videos. And if you would like to follow me everywhere else, you can find me all across social media at MikeMGTV. Follow me over on Instagram. If you want to see another side of me, a fun side, go to Instagram. Because TikTok is just short form content basically made up of these videos. But Instagram is where you get to see my real teeth, the real side of me, you know what I'm saying? But today we're just talking about drunk owners from Bar Rescue who probably need some of this. Water, okay? Drink water. I'm all for drinking alcohol, even at work, if you know your limits. But like, y'all, water. <laughs> I drink a lot, so I make sure I drink like a gallon of this stuff a day. You know, you gotta stay hydrated. It prevents a hangover and keeps you focused. All right, so let's get into the video. Uh, what? Nothing. John, the owner of this bar, actually sent me this letter. And this letter is the reason why we're here, guys. And he writes me, guys, and this is really touching. I hope this reaches your hands. I'm the owner of Brick House Bar. He talks about how he's owned it for two years. He's losing $8,000 a month. He's done three tours in Afghanistan and performed 53 medevac operations in a 13-day period in 2007. I'm so glad. I'm so happy I made the warning before this video. We're dealing with a bar owner who, from the title of this video i'm assuming drinks too much and they're a war vet and we all know how war vets struggle a lot with things like alcoholism because of ptsd and other issues and here he is reaching out to john for help because he knows there's a problem with not only his bar probably himself so i'm really i'm just like hoping we don't scream at this man john has to go back to afghanistan he deploys again in six months I could understand why somebody like in that situation would be in a situation where they might be drinking a lot and running a business that's struggling on top of it. I can't even begin to imagine the stress and internal dialogue that must be going on for this man. How are you guys doing? You got menus? You guys you got drinks? You doing okay? Yes. So there's John. He doesn't actually look like a guy who's in that kind of trouble. He looks sort of happy at the moment, doesn't he? Yeah. Bye, guys. You can never judge a book by its cover, especially with something like addiction and alcoholism. You may look fine. You might be numbing yourself in order to look fine. Honestly, it's more nerve wracking when you're able to look fine and have that problem. It's also telling that he was able to notice that there's a problem, but obviously from this clip, he's instantly slurring his words and under the influence, which means he's unable to fix the problem even though he knows it's there, which is something that I hope everybody on this crew takes into consideration when they're judging him and giving him advice because as somebody who's dealt with addiction and stuff like that, one of the biggest pet peeves I have is when people say, oh, so you know the problem, why don't you just stop? Mama, if I could, I would. <laughs> There's so much work that needs to be done internally. So with all the internal work that this guy probably has to do, he probably doesn't find time for that because he's struggling so much in his business, putting all of his efforts into that and with having the stress of having to be employed soon and all the other emotional trauma he's gone through. Oh my God, my heart. That's Rita. Rita is a bartender and is a friend of John's. I'm told the times they can be close friends. Huh. So they fucking? Is that what that means? Close friends? They fucking. <laughs> Mike is close friends with half the staff in West Hollywood. <laughs> Five shots. Are you buying or are they buying? 
I'll buy, I'll buy this round, but they gotta buy the next one. Here's my thing. As an employee who's had to deal with alcoholic bar owners, not naming any names, if I knew or could obviously tell if my owner was struggling with something like that, you know what I wouldn't do? Enable them. I would refuse. I have refused several times on several different occasions. If it's a continuous problem that the owner is getting too fucked up that it's impeding on the rest of the staff's work, then I will cut the owner off. I have. And you could get mad all you want. You could even, I've even been fired. I've been fired on a shift and when the owner sobered up the next day, they didn't even remember firing me. I was fired like six times at the Abbey and they didn't remember. <laughs> But I'll get fired for that. I don't care. I would rather get fired than enable somebody when they're going to, through a tough time because I would rather lose a job than potentially lose a coworker or friend. All right. I, I mean, I know the bar is your area, but I'm not a dummy to tell you that her finger is in the grenadine container right there. It is a disgusting grenadine mess. Oh, look at it dripping off her fingernail. The amount of times that that actually happens when you don't have a grenadine in stock. You need to have separate grenadine. You can't just use the grenadine that's mixed in with the candy cherries. And I see this happen all the time in bars where they just pick up that container and pour that into the cocktail where it's not the same thing. It's not the same grenadine. It tastes different. It's lighter. It's not as sweet. And it's nasty because it's been sitting out. And yeah, your fingers are getting in there, but honestly, your fingers are in all the drinks. As a bartender, you gotta make sure that your fingers are clean because we can't say, oh, it's been on their fingers and it's going in your drink. Your fingers are touching everything, okay? They're touching all the garnishes. We're touching the limes, the lemons, all the all the moose bushes so i'm less worried about the fingers and more worried about the quality of the ingredients going into the cocktail uh, off the cherry because i don't have a spoon back here i don't know where it went so anything that comes off of her finger is going into that person's drink and then they're drinking it yeah and where is john that happens with everything you're touching everything you're de Unless it's cross-contamination, like in the kitchen touching like stuff like chicken, then yeah, that's a problem. But like everything's going on our fingers that are going in your drink. That's why you have to make sure that you are cleanly and have clean hands. How are you? Can I get you guys? Do you guys have a Moscow mule? No. Here's like that. How do you not have a Moscow mule? How does a bar not have a Moscow mule? Here's like that. No, we don't have the 10 cups. That's a basic, basic drink in any bar. Okay, so you, you're not giving them the Moscow Mule because you don't have the tin cups, which in a normal Moscow Mule is important because it actually impacts the flavor. However, if someone asked for a Moscow Mule, I could say, I can give you that, I just don't have the tin cups, so would you like it in like a rocks glass or something similar? There's ways around it. You, you can be innovative to get around this. See, one thing that Colorado is known for is their beer yep. and how great it is. And their beer system right now is horrible. Look at the foam. Oh my gosh, it's just pouring out pitchers of foam. So the fact of the matter is that prof- That means it's, hold on, hold on. If the draft beer is coming out with too much foam, that means there's too much air. That means that the keg that's feeding it probably needs to be changed, which the bar owner would probably know if he wasn't over drinking, or maybe if they had a good bar back system who was properly trained. But any good bartender or anyone who's worked in a bar before should know that. That's like basic level one stuff. Shots are always good. I would do one of those. I would definitely take one with you. This is the second. Okay, all funny things aside, that's me. <laughs> it's me bartending. What's your favorite thing to make? Shots. I'll do one too. <laughs> Who knows how many rounds for him? I'm on the bar. Sorry. He's doing drinks. Off. He threw him out of his own bar. The bartender kicked him out of the bar. Which we have to do sometimes because you're in the way. You're not making drinks, you're just in the way. You're drunk and fumbling your words. The customer's probably hitting on those girls trying to get them to take shots with you, which is creepy enough. But what you're doing is you're ruining the flow of the bartenders that are trying to work. Because if you're just standing there talking to people in the way of the people trying to work, you get in our way and you're slowing everybody else down. Which is also why owners shouldn't be behind the bar that much micromanaging, especially if there's not that much space behind the bar because you're not helping the situation. All you're doing is getting in our way. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I told him, I was like, you want to f a chick? You better Oh, she's getting pissed. She is, and he should know it, but he's so drunk, he's just gonna keep hugging those girls and taking pictures with those girls. I don't like that because he's using, it's a power dynamic I do not like within the bar community. I don't like it when owners use their status as the owner and the ability to give them free alcohol and drinks to flirt with the girls because that's creepy. And it's also creepy from the other side because those girls are probably just pretending to flirt with him or using him in order to get free drinks. So it's creepy on both ends. I don't like it. I don't like it. No, 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 no. Please, can I have a f drink, somebody? Looks like John. 
Sean's making Rita jealous. Looks like she's having a couple of drinks. I never get mad about it, but I'm getting mad. What I'm getting want? ignored. You get the f away from me right now. Okay. The owner was kind of. This is why you don't fuck coworkers that get jealous. This is what happens in the straight bars. I'd be fucking coworkers at gay bars, but that's because we don't really like care. <laughs> Don't fuck your staff if feelings can get involved, okay? Rule number 365. Yeah. He was really drunk. He was really, really awkward. This is a hero, guys. He's done this to himself. He's in a debt 300 freaking grand. Look at him. Right. My problem isn't only that he knows and is like still forced to be in the situation. My problem is with everybody else surrounding him because they're all enablers. Everyone in this situation is enabling him to not better himself. They all don't care about the bar. They don't care about him. They just care about getting a quick paycheck or getting free drinks and using this man until he has nothing left to give. I don't care what you do. Go home with those bitches for all I care. Oh man. For those Get the fuck. I've got to stop this cycle, guys. I'm gonna so let's add like relationship drama going on in this man's personal life. Everything's a mess. Forget the bar. The bar is the least thing that's his problem. The bar is like the most put together thing from everything else I've seen in this man's life, which is concerning because the bar is in shambles. What's going on with you know this Go. What's Don't going start. On with Don't poke. Go inside. Go get some water. Okay? Yeah, she's fine. Go. Just Leave her alone. Enough for tonight. Go. It's like dealing with a frat boy. It's like dealing with a frat boy who got so drunk that they know they fucked up. But also, what is she doing putting herself in that situation crying? Like, what is what is going on here? What is this? I'm trying so hard not to be so mean and judgmental and be understanding. But I don't understand how this dynamic happens or like continues to happen. I'm out of a stressful situation the second someone farts wrong. What are they, what's going on? No. Go, John, I'm not joking with you, go. So how are you guys doing? You guys hitting shots? A man, a man that makes a woman cry because of something and then knows that she's crying because of that something and is trying to act like, what's wrong? What did I do? And then goes back to doing that something that made her cry. Uh. <laughs> there is zero accountability and self-reflecting going on here. This is just continuous mistakes. Why not? Have another one with him. What's the difference at this point? You and I have some talking to do, right? Yeah. Okay, let's go sit down and talk. Oh shit, bitch, someone be bamboozled. Imagine fucking up and that's like, if, screw him being the owner. Imagine if he was a worker. John's the boss now, like you're fucking up at work and the boss is just like right there and you didn't even know. You didn't have the wherewithal to even know what's going on around you. How are you gonna run a bar? How do you write John a letter saying that you have a problem, that you're this much in debt and have camera crews in the bar and don't stay focused enough? Focused enough to understand that things are gonna happen at any moment. John's big ass could come through walking through the doors and you don't even have the wherewithal to be able to tell. You wrote the letter. There's camera crews in there. I say this every time. This would be your best behavior and that is what concerns me. That if this is the best behavior, what happens when there are not cameras? This guy has had about 11 shots and I'm concerned the man's gonna throw up while I'm talking to him. I'm here to help you. How many times have you been deployed? Three. How many years have you been serving? 16. This man has, he's, he's drank himself completely numb. I'm looking at his face right now and it breaks my heart because so far we've seen his staff cry, his business falling apart, he just got busted by John, the girls are using him at the bar and now he's sitting face to face with him looking at him with no emotion behind his eyes. Oh my god. What face do you right now? Pretty drunk. Can you function in the military drunk? Absolutely not. You think you can function in any business drunk? No. See, the military is probably a better environment for him to be in because it's gonna get him away from this. This man, part of me doesn't want them to save his business because part of me doesn't think that he should be in this business for his own health and safety because it's a vice. It's gonna do nothing but hurt you. There's alcoholism going on here. There is a problem. We shouldn't be making this business better so that he's still there. 
he needs to go get help before he can fix this business. And honestly, this business might be something he needs to get rid of in order to help himself. Is it a place where you come and party and get laid, or is it a place where you come to make money? It's got to be a place to make money. What is it now? It's been a place to screw around and party and... Uh, do you have a personal relationship with Rita? I do. You do. So you have a personal relationship with one of your employees. And in front of that employee, you're flirting and drinking with other girls at the bar. I like how John is approaching this because he's not demeaning him like I've seen him do to other irresponsible bar owners. He's giving him a harsh wake-up call. He's pointing out the facts. He's pointing out everything that this man needs to hear and probably already knows, but he needs someone in his life to say it out loud and hold him accountable because nobody else in this environment is. Do you understand what I'm saying? Can you hear me? No, I hear you. Why should I help you, John? You're not helping yourself. You're sitting here drunk, trying to get laid with your girlfriend watching. John, I'm not trying to get laid. I'm just trying to get this bar under control. So you get lies. Lies and Manali lies to my face. We've seen you on camera. How are you going to lie if you're on camera? How are you going to lie when we see your ass flirting with these girls? If you... But you ain't giving pretty girls free drinks at bars with no malintent, with no skeevy shit going on. Uh-uh, no way. Everybody in this situation knows exactly what's going on. Everybody gets it. Every I listen, I respect the game, but not when the but not when the game is this seedy. I don't I don't like it. It's icky. It's icky. It's icky. It's icky before it gets sticky. Did you sell anything? I sold a couple of things, but did you make sure that the money's going in the register? No. Did you make sure the place is clean? No. So you didn't try to stay sober. You didn't try to clean your bar. You didn't try to make sure they're collecting money. You didn't try to sell anything. Exactly. He's smiling at him, which is gonna make me freak out. He's smiling at him. That's gonna. Oh, that would. Pi oh my. Oh. Oh no. 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 I'm here to help you. And I'm pointing out everything that you know is wrong and you know is a problem. And instead of honestly being ashamed, like honestly, sometimes you need to feel that. I've been in that situation. But if someone was calling out all the things that I asked for help with, telling me how I was screwing with their business, and I just sat there and smiled at them, oh my God. Exactly what did you try to do? Give me one, John. What did you do today, John? Uh. You drank and you flirted. What else did you do today, John? That's about it. Why the f are you ashamed? I am. <sighs> no, he's not. He's sitting there smiling and laughing in his face. He's laughing at John like John's the joke. Sir, I don't want to say this about you because I respect what you do for our country, but not what you're doing for yourself. That is the thing. And I'm going to be tough in this situation because I needed to hear this my own self in the past. This is ridiculous, the level of zero accountability and scoffing at somebody who's trying to help you that you reached out in order to get the help. You need to feel the shame. You need to feel and understand how bad you messed up. You need to hit bottom and really feel it in order to actually make improvement because we could wrap everything in a pretty bow. We could make everything, you know, for the time being look like it's all pretty and glittery and like everything's fixed. But the second they're gone, if this man doesn't truly feel that, then it's gonna go back to shit. I am. I am. Get together. Grow up. I want you to see how you're- Oh my God, it cut off. Oh God, honestly, good. Like I hope for that, I hope that that episode ended well, because, but I needed to stop. I needed to stop reacting to that specific situation because it was infuriating me and we were getting nowhere. <laughs> it won't fix itself, mother- How is he managing this place? You know, he can stay focused for a little bit but then he starts to get stressed out and it, his way of dealing with it is to self-medicate with alcohol. How's it going, ladies? Hi, how are you? Which is the definition of a problem. A problem, especially with bar owners. This makes me not want to help them in the bar. This makes me want to help them. This makes me want it to be a completely different show. So that's Nicole, your manager. Mm-hmm. Plus another beer, too. Who's that? Josh. I need a shot, too. Okay. That's Travis. Travis is so they're throwing alcohol at him, which also infuriates me. This is the same problem that we're having with enabling, where I personally don't understand that because I've talked about how I've had to water down drinks before. I've done that the most with coworkers or the bar owners when they're getting too drunk and they're being a problem. If you ask me for a drink and I feel like I have to give it to you because technically I'm your employee, I'm either gonna A, say I'm too busy and like not do it, or give you something crazy watered down so you won't even know. But these people are gonna give him a beer and throw in an extra shot. Did his attitude cause the failure or did the failure cause his attitude? When we first opened, 
he was positive, he used to be happy and fun and enjoy life, and now he just seems miserable all the time. I think he's- Because he got stressed out and is using alcohol as a clutch, which is scary for all bar owners. That It's what happens because opening and running a restaurant or bar business is insanely stressful. There's so much going on there. I drink from the stress of running this YouTube channel, and I don't even gotta leave my house. Hey, you girls started off with something to drink? everything and maybe I wouldn't be in this situation right now, dude. Okay. Well, obviously something's going on. Travis, did you give stuff away? He forgets. You ladies want a shot? Yeah. You don't forget. I love the quotations. You never forget to ring up a drink because then you'd be forgetting to take the tip. Like it makes, that makes zero sense. But also you got the owner yelling at the bartending and staff blaming them for why everything is failing when you're the owner. If the, if the staff is sucks, you fire them and you get better staff. Or you implement better things within the bar. Instead, you're just sitting there drunk. So what example, as an owner, do you think you are setting? So was he a drinker when you came? I mean, he would drink, but never like this. Uh -huh. yeah, let's do it. All right, Jen. Have an owner, your husband, who's sitting at the bar getting drunk. He hasn't been in the kitchen in a while. He hasn't looked at any tables. He doesn't know if things are coming out right. This is him, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you're out. It's falling into despair. That's what this is. This is submitting to a bad situation. Instead of, you know, bucking up and being positive and trying to find a way to fix it and get the job done, it's submitting to the pressure. Everything's becoming too much, which I'm sure we can all relate to. We've all been in this situation. It just, it, it breaks my heart when I see it on camera and I just want to verbalize it so people can like empathize, you know what I mean? Because we've all been there. Don't ask me your name. That's one another one of my big pet peeves. Don't ask me if I remember your name because if I don't remember your name, it's your fault. You want me to remember your name? Be more interesting. What's my name? I bet you remember. How old are you? What are like 25? Yes, we're going with that. 25. She's 30, actually. No, I'm 25. Yeah, I should have gasped by the lines by your eyes. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. Well, I didn't mean to. I'm, I'm a little drunk. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Hello? You just tell this girl she basically needed Botox? My Is this flirting? Let's. As an owner, you know what we should do? Let's go around and insult the customers and tell them that you're judging their age based around the lines around their eyes. Oh my god, that's how you die in a gay bar. <laughs> that's, I'm surprised this man is still walking. I'm surprised this woman hasn't kicked him in the nuts. Now, if you came out with a friend, would you want him sitting next to you doing this? Absolutely not. In fact, I've left places because of that. Of course you have. Or would He's the creepy guy at the bar. You know the creepy guy that all women want to avoid at the bar? The reason why straight women invade gay bars to begin with? He's the creepy guy, and it's his bar. The thing giving his bar a bad reputation is him. So now he's established himself as the owner. He's established himself as a big shot. He's demeaned everybody around him. Changing the level of power, the dynamic that I'm talking about, which is creepy and disgusting. And that's his wife in the car with John watching them do this. I don't know what goes on in y'all's couples, but I would be busting through that door, kicking his ass right now. Uh-uh, you got to be single real quick. So what would be happening if I wasn't here? We'd go out of business for sure. We would lose our house. Um, parents would lose a huge chunk of their retirement money. How old are your kids? Two and four. He pays us all this lip service about how hard he's working to help and turn this place around. And this is what he's doing. My heart breaks for her, his wife, who's probably working a lot harder to keep everything together. Happy, happy birthday. Happy endings. We were like 19. I love And it was like birthday. Now that isn't what they meant when they tattooed on their arms, was it? Everything that this man is saying is just insanely creepy and disrespectful not only to his establishment but his family who also is working so hard on keeping everything together this these This this episode is hard because I want to go in on these people but I don't want to yell at people for actions taken when they they have a problem. I don't think I need to say it. I don't think I need to yell for all of us to feel the same frustration. You're acting like you normally act, which is Yeah, okay, I'm working. Yeah, dude. Keep working. Shut up. Don't act like you do me a favor, bro. You're done. 
I know, but it's just good job. Nope. There, seriously, Tronis. Tronis. Nope. How embarrassing that must be. As a bar owner, how embarrassing it must be to be cut off by your staff. How embarrassing, when you cut somebody off, it's because that they are being, they are being a detriment to everyone else around them. And you're the owner being that detriment. How embarrassing. Stop now. Stop, dude, stop. At least Travis cut him off. This is really hard to watch. That's not hard to watch. He, if he was anyone other than the owner, he would be instantly fired. He's swinging at his own staff. This could become a legal issue. This man needs to be taken out of the equation. For his family watching this, for everybody, they should be extremely concerned. And the best thing for this business is to remove this man from it. For his own well-being, along with everything else involved. Do you need to go in and see him? He needs a kick in a freaking ass. Do you agree? I agree, yes. Okay. He needs to stop. Rock his world. Get the f out of here! Hey. Remember me? Oh. Your wife? Get his ass, Queen! Get his ass! Okay, I don't gotta say it because Queen's here. Get his ass, Queen! She said, Remember me? Your wife? Bitch! Get his ass, Queen! You come home and you say, oh, I'm working so hard to turn around the business. I'm working I so hard. No, no, you're not. If you were really working hard to turn around the business, you would stop drinking. You would stop cursing in front of customers. Hey, right. guess what? If you came in here and actually worked a little bit. Oh, hit him in the nuts. Hit him in the nuts. That woman is a warrior. That woman is the fighter. That woman is the one keeping their family together. She probably doesn't want to be there, but she feels more stuck than he does because she's the real one. She's the real rock holding shit together because he has all his problems. And you know what? She has those problems too. And he's a bigger problem added on to that. Get him, girl. Get him. Josh is actually blaming this on Alexia. I'm going in and putting a stop to this right away. I'm done. I am not watching this anymore, and I am not having you take the kids down the tubes with you. You either agree to stop this, recommit to this business, and recommit to our family. We have put everything on the line. We have put our family on the line. We have put your parents on the line. Hold him accountable. Listen, it's not my place to demean somebody who's going through a problem, but if you're somebody who's really gonna make them feel it, the ones that they love and cherish in their family, those are the ones who need to be tough with you. It, it's not me, a stranger on the internet, just belittling someone who's going through a problem. It's your loved ones holding you accountable and doing exactly what this woman is doing. That is what people in this situation need. Hell yeah, bitch. Love it, love everything about it, because this is what's gonna make him hit rock bottom and get his shit together, which would inevitably also help the bar. <sighs> You need to know. No, let me just finish that. Finish that, and this is just over. Just give it to me. He dumped it on him. Hell yeah! Oh shit! You know my petty ass. When I listen, I've seen drinks get thrown on reality TV before, and I live it. I'm like, yes, housewife's fantasy. Throw it again. Dump a drink. That's when you're gonna fight. I've been on several reality shows. You guys have seen me in this situation on reality shows. If you've actually seen it, I know you might not have, but that's a different story. You don't hit my, don't hurt me like that by saying you haven't watched. But I've been in that situation where a drink gets thrown or dumped on you. Oh, it's the epitome of disrespect. Oh, it's the epitome of get the fuck over yourself and wake the fuck up. Been embarrassing her all night, leaning in on these girls. And you have the audacity, sitting on your ass drunk, to actually blame your failure on her? It's been tough, John. No, 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 no. It's been tough, John. Suck my dick. It's been tough, John. Don't give me excuses. This is the excuse level. This, don't give excuses. We ain't gonna fly with that. Because you just went from rage to excuses. You've yet to be accountable. You have two children at home and a wife. You know you're a drunk, right? Yeah. You know it. I do. You know you're not working. But folks, now you know why I'm here. It's not because of a failing bar. It's because of a failing person. <laughs> it ain't right, but it's okay. Because when people are like this, you need to give them a fucking reality check, bitch. Hell yes. You should sleep in your bar tonight. Let's go. Let's just get out of here. Come here.
I love John. I love him. I love this man. He's he's gained so much respect for me after watching these videos. I used to, you know, not agree with everything he said, but he's really, really growing on me. I have a lot of common with this man. I have so much respect for him for how we just handled that. Yes, yes. And then we have legal, but you can't fire somebody from their own bar. So what? I, so why? Why are we helping this? Why are we helping save this bar? I want to save the bar, but I don't. I don't think he should be a part of it. He's here fighting the customers. Lisa Vanderpump would never. Calm down. Calm down. Oh, I'm gonna take it down. Stop it. Calm down. Calm down. Hey, stop. Stop. Stop, Josh. Go home. Seriously. What? That's, if anybody wants to know what zero looks like, if anybody wants to know what hitting rock bottom looks like, bitch, here we are. We're all at our wit's end. Could someone give me a ride home, dude? The man needs a kick in the nuts. I also feel bad for the employees. Like, what are you supposed to do? Some of them, that might be their only livelihood, so maybe they can't even leave. Everybody here is trapped. There's one thing poisoning it, and it's the person who's in complete control. And that's a terrible situation to be in, when the person who needs to be in complete control is in zero control of themselves. So Desi had a stroke three months ago. He's fine now. You wonder if the failing of the bar might have helped cause the stroke. Everything's gotta be Desi's gotta- He had a stroke, and he's still drinking this much? and in this kind of stressful environment, at what point do we remove them from the bar? At what point? At what point for your own health and safety do we leave the bad situation? I understand that there's reasons why you can't, but like, there has to be better ways than this. Now the pressure is on Lindsay to take over. She needs to take the burden off him physically of coming here every day. Is that your answer? Why? <laughs> but he's not giving her the control to so he is there when he doesn't need to be. Cause this girl, his daughter is about to take over the business. So he doesn't need to be there. He probably feels like he does because it's hard for a, an adult man sometimes to relinquish control, especially if it's their business that they've dedicated a lot of their life to. But now, even though he feels like he needs to be there, by being there, he's causing more of a problem. He's preventing her to be able to work and take ownership because he's a problem! Look at the color of that cutting board. Oh, hasn't been bleached, hasn't been cleaned, scrubbed. Yeah, yeah. like mold right there. That's it. Do you know how bad cutting boards are? Everyone has cutting boards. You know when I used to work in the bar business, when the health department came in, we were told to throw the cutting boards away immediately. Don't even worry about it. When the health department walks in, throw them away. Get them gone because Cutting boards, when they start having grooves in, the, in them from using the knife and cutting, which they all end up doing it, it's instantly a strike because there's so much bacteria that cutting boards hold, especially if they've been there for a while. So for a cutting board to look like that, mama, there's no health department. There's none. They don't exist. I'm, I'm literally at this point from reacting to so many episodes of Bar Rescue, convinced that the health department is a unicorn. It doesn't actually exist. There's Amanda. She's another bartender. Oh my god. Oh my god, they just like smacking bugs and smoking. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta something. I gotta something and I don't even know what it is. They're smoking and drinking while they're working. Smoking is legal in these bars, but not for employees. Okay. And not in work areas. Mm -hmm. Obviously, can you smoke behind a bar? No. Of course not. It's a food. Even if smoking is allowed in the bar, the employees, the ones making the food and drinks, Never, never, even if it's allowed in the bar, because the, it can get in the food and the drinks, which is disgusting! What? Most of the staff have been working here for years. Every one of these employees has a bar tab, and they owe Desi money. I have never... How big is their bar tab? I guarantee you they're not ringing up half the stuff that's supposed to be on that bar tab, because I've had bar tabs. Working in the bar industry, the bar tabs are like max 40 bucks, which ends up being like max four drinks, which is supposed to be for drinks that you give away to customers, not for yourself. But the fact that these people have been working there for so many years makes me feel that they also are excessively comfortable there, thinking that they won't get in trouble, especially because a lot of people seem to be family members, which makes them feel even more secure and not afraid that they're gonna get fired or held accountable. Thank you. You're very welcome. Your first one's around Desi. No, thank you. Yeah. I, that's on me, I got that. 
I can tell you one thing, Desi's allergic to money. Free. If you are a bar that is losing so much money, why continue to give shit away? I don't understand. Like, if you're a successful bar, like, if the bar is in the green and y'all killing it, sure, throw it around, do what you gotta do, make people happy. But when you're in the red, that bad, like, hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, and not only your staff's being encouraged to drink, but you're just throwing drinks out, then what? what how are you confused? Of this about the situation that you're in. I'm fumbling my words because I'm like flabbergasted. Got me doing shots over here. Vegas bomb on Desi. So Brent, so you've got a free round of shots. This shot is disgusting. That's a huge shot. That is not that's like a double shot that is also on Desi, who's the bar owner, and the margaritas they got were also on Desi, the bar owner. So that's four drinks so far that these two men are enjoying for free. And they're not even good. <laughs> so now free is going to be expected because you're like, at least they're free. I'm going to keep drinking even though they're shit drinks. I'm going to keep drinking for free because why the hell not? Their, their shit's not on the line, but the owner doesn't seem to give a fuck. Jesse Romano's home of the first one's free. <laughs> yeah, he's getting smashed. <laughs> I can't even imagine how. This man is more excited about being the life of the party and being fun than being a bar owner. Dad. Up, baby. Do I don't like you. Okay, well, you're making that clear. Clear my really? mouth. Just calm it down. Shut, shut, shut up. Okay. He's talking to his daughter like that in public. While she's supposed to be the new one that's being trained to be in charge and take over the bar, let's demean her in front of the entire staff and rest of the bar. That's, it's, oh my God, that's disgusting. I'm the boy, so nobody give him a shot. Okay. What the hell? Thank you. No more drinking. But Desi is not listening. She's trying to be the responsible one and take ownership of the bar. But he's not letting her get out of there. Manda. Yes. Really can't give him another shot. Oh, um, hey, okay. I can't. I'm sorry. I'm not the boss no more. I think you've had enough. Is this just like, it's always men. It's just a bunch of toxic men. It's toxic masculinity ruins everything in this world. And I get offended when it starts in ruining the bars. That's when I get involved. I just want that one more. There you go, there you go, okay. There you go. Another drink. No, it's not. That was supposed to be a shot. It was half a cup. It was more than that. It was, oh my God. What is going on? What you want? Behind you. He's got your back. Very observant guy. Huh? Speechless? Screwed. That's what he is. Screwed. What is he going to tell him now? I'm not drunk. I just didn't have any idea that you've been standing behind me for half an hour. You have nothing to say, dude. Not the Tom or John. Wow. Doesn't even know his name. Doesn't even, can't even say his name. Oh my God. Mama. And this is what you got to show for it? Really? Not tonight. Really? What do you tonight? Mean tonight? Really? really. I, uh you're losing money tonight. Isn't tonight a good night? How, how not tonight? There's cameras there. There's camera. Crew. There's a camera crew filming the show. What did you think was going to happen? I said no more. Please, please, please. please put God. the freaking beer down. Put the beer down. Takes another drink. Is the next beer more important to him than making money? It's the level of disrespect that these men have within a failing bar. The level of like dismissal and disrespect that you're showing somebody who's there to help you is my problem. Does he know how much money he's losing? No, he doesn't, does he? Does he have a retirement? Why tonight? Because I'm here tonight. That's why. I would like him to act like an owner. Like tonight's any different than any other night probably? Like I said, you're in front of cameras. Imagine what happens when there's no cameras. Like, what do you mean why tonight? Like this is better than any other night possibly? Please. Enough! Oh my god, this guy is the most ridiculous. This woman, this his daughter, is begging for help, is trying so hard to keep it together, and he's the worst! Please come back, oh my god. You caught me on surprise, George! I caught you drunk, is how I caught you. Pull your staff together and show me you got a freaking spine, okay? Go to work! You don't want to see my staff? Go to work! Do it, Santa! Please, I love you so really? much. Tonight? I feel for the daughter. I feel for the daughter. She's trying to calm him down and trying to fix the business at the same time. They need to get his ass in a home for his own self safety. I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say. Whatever. What did I do? You guys sit down here at the bar and let's all talk, okay? 
you don't listen to what he's saying, we're not going to have Come on, John. What do you not? You not understand? It's oh, I don't understand how these like even when you're that drunk. Like I've been I've been I've been. Let me tell you something right now. If y'all know anything about me, it's that I've been a level of drunk that's concerning. But I've always been able to know still when I fuck up. When I I've never been so drunk that I didn't know when I was wrong. I don't understand. I don't understand how you're that how you have that mindset. What's going on where you don't know where you can't be self aware enough to know what the fuck is going on within yourself like you could be so fucked up where you don't know what's going on around you but like within yourself you don't know how what a mess you are you you don't know i think the problem is that they do know and it's mad they're frustrated with themselves and they're taking it out on everyone else around them do you really want to talk right now in your condition oh gosh, and embarrass oh yourself more than oh don't you think that's in your best interest to shut the hell up they for say, five minutes they say it but i don't know if that's the right thing to do well, what is the alternative? You to be there? Because apparently him not knowing what the right thing to do is the problem. Because he doesn't think the right thing to do is to leave it to his daughter, who obviously is a much better fit than him. And he doesn't think it's the right thing to do to leave and get himself out of there, which obviously is the right thing to do. He doesn't even think it's the right thing to do to shut the fuck up, which is the right thing to do. I live a thousand miles from here, and I'm here to help you. So either you take it seriously or you don't. Up to you. Do you get it? And he's sitting there drinking the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose, uh, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, I'm gonna lose my shit. Can he deal with a losing business right now? This is more than a business, isn't it? What are you worried about? It's all right. You're worried that your dad might die over this, correct? Absolutely. We're all worried about that. This is a family. This is a family whose family member is this right now. I don't understand how no one's intervened yet. I don't I don't understand that dynamic. In my family, they would be out, they would have a choice. The rest of us would all stepped in and gotten his ass out of there. He after the stroke, he would have never been back. Never. It would have gone to somebody else and we'll call you when we need you for advice. But like the family's trying so hard to get him together, but they're also fucking up themselves. Like, this whole dynamic is toxic. She's scared for the health of her daddy. Where's Lindsay? She's not coming back. She'll come. You Lindsay chased your daughter out. away. Good guy. I love her more than life. It shows. If you really loved her, you would... You, if you really loved her, you would give her what she needs, which is to have the establishment under control and for you to take care of yourself. You really love your daughter... Take care of yourself and stop being a burden on her. Hit him where it hurts. That's what you need to say to people like this. And that you failed tonight and that you will come back here sober tomorrow and be sober all week and work to improve this and then I will help you. Did you but if rehearse what you I don't rehearse a thing. You don't need to rehearse it. You can say that in the moment because look at you. Oh my God. Oh my god, you guys, I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna lose my mind. I, I, I don't know how much longer I can do this. Just show up tomorrow, oh so You gotta be sober and you gotta come sober. back. That's nothing, you can do that, you do that a lot, you can do that. The hell with it, guys. Just please, the hell wait, with a it. wait, 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 no, wait, 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 Have Lindsay give me a call. You're a dick. You're a dick. And you're broke. <laughs> you're a dick. And you're broke. Done. Done. We got it. We got the final cut, bitch. Oh my God. This episode was tough to watch, but necessary for anybody else who might be dealing with something like this or relatable for people with family members like this or anybody who's in a bar or service industry who knows all of these people. Like everything we just saw tonight, everybody will be able to recognize and know somebody like that. And I'm glad we talked about how we should take these things seriously earlier in these videos. And I don't wanna just sit here and make a joke out of it, but did you see how we handled these things? Did you see how we had to be tough, give a wake up call, be open, honest, and sometimes even a little bit harsh, not making it a joke or something to laugh at, something that is serious. You really have to be stern and give people like in this situation a wake up call and it's heart wrenching and it should hurt because only from that will you learn and get better because sometimes people need that. Otherwise, they will never be able to be accountable and never be able to recognize it on their own if they're left to their own devices. Oh my God. <laughs> what did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to future videos. I put them out weekly, usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but sometimes I'm late, just like your mom. Thank you so much to the regulars and barflies over on Patreon for help making this channel possible and helping me invest in this 
channel to make it better like this new mic. Hello, hi everybody. And special shout out to this person over on Twitter. If you would like a special shout out in one of my videos, be sure to retweet them when they come out. And that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, my name is Mike MGTV and you are fucking welcome. Be sure to take care of yourselves and stay safe and happy. Bye-bye.